Today we've got a really cool limit of an expression having to do with an integral. Well, let's look at it and I'll tell you why I think this is pretty cool. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of n over two to the n times the integral from zero to one of x to the n minus one times one plus x to the n. And what I think about is cool about this is, well, this term n over two to the n clearly approaches zero as n is approaching infinity. But if this is approaching zero and well, presumably we'll get an interesting value for this integral like some sort of non-zero real number, that means that this portion, the integral, has to be approaching infinity. So somehow these two balance each other out kind of nicely. In other words, it's kind of telling us the growth rate of this integral with respect to this n over two to the n. Okay, so let's maybe get started. And we're gonna get started by manipulating the integral portion of this. So let's take this i sub n, which is what I'll, I will call the integral. So let's just copy it down. So we have i sub n is the integral from zero to one, x to the n minus 1, 1 plus x to the n dx. And now, what are we going to do with that? Well, I'd like to split a portion of this 1 plus x to the n off so that it has the exponent that uh, the power of x has here. So in other words, we're going to have something like this. So I'll just bring it down right here. We're going to have x to the n minus 1 one plus x to the n minus one times one plus x dx. And the motivation for that will be to now distribute all of this through to this one and then to this x. And then, well, we'll see where we go from there. So let's start with that. So bringing that through, that's going to now become two integrals. We've got this integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 times 1 plus x to the n minus 1 dx plus this integral from 0 to 1 of, well now this is going to be x to the n times 1 plus x to the n minus 1 dx. So taking a step back, observe that we started with an integral where the power of x was one smaller than the power of one plus x. And now, well, we've turned that into this integral where the exponents are the same, and then this integral right here where the exponents are flipped. And here we're gonna start weaving these types of integrals together until we form some sort of equation involving these integrals. So let's start that with integration by parts. So we'll apply integration by parts to this blue underlined integral. And well, what will the integration by parts setup be for that? Well, let's take u to be equal to x to the n. Of course, that means that du will be equal to n times x to the n minus one. And then, well, if u is equal to that, that means dv has to be the rest. So that's going to be 1 plus x to the n minus 1 dx, meaning that v is equal to 1 over n times 1 plus x to the n. And now notice our quote unquote v du term will have x to the n minus 1 and 1 plus x to the n. So we, we will achieve this i sub n again. But let's bring that up here. So here we have i sub n is now equal to this first integral. So that's from zero to one of x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n minus one dx. And then we'll apply integration by parts to this second integral. So what's that gonna give us? Well, recall that it is u times v evaluated from zero to one. So that'll be x to the n over n times one plus x to the n, we've got to evaluate that from zero to one. So like I said, that's our u times v evaluated at the endpoints type term. And then we'll have minus the integral of v du. 
But now notice that the n's cancel there and we have x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n dx. But like I observed before, this term right here is simply our original i sub n term. We can see that just by looking at it over there. So that allows us to solve an equation for i sub n. So observe that i sub n will be equal to one half this integral from zero to one of x to the n minus one times one plus x to the n minus one dx, and then plus one half this evaluation right here. Of course, what I did here is I added the i sub n to the left-hand side of the equation, and now I'm dividing by two. So what's that gonna leave us with? Well, that's gonna leave us with two to the n minus one over n. That's because this right here will be two to the n over n, but then, like I said, dividing by two will give us this two to the n minus one. So now I'm gonna take this integral that's involved in this i sub n expansion, and I'm gonna, well, give it a name for one thing. So I'll give it the name j sub n. And then I'm also gonna perform, well, you might have guessed it, an integration by parts round on that as well. So our integration by parts around here will be u equals x to the n minus one times one plus x to the n minus one. In other words, u is the entire integrand. But what does that mean du is? So that means du will be n minus one times a bunch of stuff using the product rule. Observe that we're gonna get an n minus one multiplier for everything because both of those exponents are n minus one. So let's see, we'll have x to the n minus two, one plus x to the n minus one, and then plus x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n minus two, and then dx. I guess I don't have room for dx there because I ran out of it, but just keep in mind that the dx is there. And then, well, let's take dv to be dx, which is what we have to do given that's all that's left over. But now I'm gonna take this interesting choice here and I'll take v to be equal to one plus x. Um, yeah, one plus x. So dv is dx there. And that's because, well, obviously the derivative of one is zero. Okay, cool. So now let's bring this j sub n down and apply this integration by parts formula. So now we're gonna have our u times v evaluated at the certain endpoints type term. So let's see, what is that gonna be? So that's gonna give us something like x to the n minus one times one plus x to the n. That power of one plus x gets bumped back up, evaluated from zero to one. And then we have our minus u dv term, sorry, our minus v du term. So that's actually gonna be kinda big-ish, but you know, let's just see what we get. So minus, now let's say we've got n minus one times the integral from zero to one of, let's write down this term first. So that'll be x to the n minus two, and then one plus x to the n dx. And so that's because this one plus x will build that up and then we'll have another minus n minus one, and then the integral from zero to one of x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n minus one. And that's from building this second term up. Okay, and then, well, I guess the important thing to notice here is that this integral we've achieved uh, at the end here is our original j sub n integral. Okay, so that's cool. And then, well, another thing to notice is that this first term is very evaluatable. It looks pretty similar to evaluation we did before. And this gives us what? Well, let's observe that that pretty clearly gives us two to the n. All right, so now let's see what we can do here. Let's maybe add these n minus one j sub n's over and that's going to give us a total of n j sub n's being equal to 2 to the n and then plus 1 minus n. I'm just going to switch the order of subtraction there by bringing the minus sign in. 
and then we'll have the integral from zero to one of, now I'm gonna do a interesting trick here. I'm gonna take this nth power of x and I'm gonna split it into an n minus first power of, I should have said one plus x, and then a first power of that. So in other words, I'm gonna write this as, and then x to the n minus two, one plus x to the n minus one times one plus x dx. So again, that follows this theme of splitting this up. And now we're gonna take this entire term right here, this x to the n minus two, one plus x to the n minus one, and we're gonna distribute it onto both of these terms, the one and then the x. So being careful, that's gonna give us two to the n plus one minus n, our integral from zero to one of x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n minus one, sorry, that's x to the n minus two dx. So that's distributing onto the one, and then plus one minus n, the integral from zero to one of, let's see, x to the n minus one, one plus x to the n minus one dx. Okay, so now we've got that. But now we've achieved some of our named terms again. So let's observe that this two to the n plus one minus n, and then this integral here, our power of x is one less than our power of one plus x, but that's what's going on here. And so that would be i sub n minus one. It's just the index is one lower. And then after that, we've got plus one minus n, and then observe that those two exponents being the same, and they're both n minus one, means that that is our j. So that's our j sub n. So we've got something like that. But now, where can we go from there? Let's observe that I'm gonna underline all of this in pink, and that gives us a nice equation that we can solve for j sub n. And I'm gonna bring that equation up here just so that we can write it on this board. But then after that, we'll erase everything and kind of start with a fresh slate. So solving that for j sub n, we get the following. So we'll have two to the n over two n minus one, and then plus one minus n over two to the n minus one times i sub n minus one. Okay, great. But then let's observe that, that j sub n is going to be inserted into this formula for i sub n. So in fact, what we'll do is start the next board with this nice recursive formula for i sub n. Okay, so putting everything together that we saw so far, we ended with the following equation, which is like a recursion for i sub n. And now in order to do the last couple of steps, steps I'm gonna set L equal to our goal limit. But then I'll take the integral part of our goal limit and simply write it as the i sub n, which is what we've been using the entire time. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this equation we've built and I'm gonna clear the denominators. Well, maybe not clear the denominator all the way. I'm gonna clear this four times n minus two from the denominator of i sub n minus one. And then I'm also gonna move some things around. I'll add the i sub n minus one to the other side of the equation. So let's see what that's gonna leave us with. So clearing the denominator means that i sub n will have a coefficient of 4n minus 2. So let's write that down. We've got 4n minus 2 times i sub n. And then that's going to be added to n minus 1 times i sub n. And that's because if we move that 1 minus n to the other side of the equation, it becomes n minus 1. Oh, and that should be times i sub n minus 1, not i sub n. So we've got something like that. And then, well, what are we left with after that? Well, that means we're gonna need to take this whole term and multiply it by four n minus two. So let's see, we'll have four n minus two over n times two to the n minus one. And then that's gonna be plus two to the n. And that's because four n minus two over 2n minus 1 is simply equal to 2.
Okay, so let's see what this ends up leaving us with in the end. So we'll have 4n over n, which is 4, multiplied into 2 to the n minus 1 will be 2 to the n plus 1. So we've got something like that. And then after that, we'll have minus, let's see, 2 times 2 to the n minus 1, which is 2 to the n over n plus 2 to the n. So something that looks kind of like that. And so now what I want to do is factor a 2 to the n out of this whole thing and see what we're left with. So this is going to leave us with a 2 plus 1, which is 3, and then minus 1 over n for this remaining term right here. So now we're left with something like this. And now what I'll do is I'll divide everything by 2 to the n. So let's do that. If we divide everything by 2 to the n, what are we left with? Well, we're going to be left with 4 times n over 2 to the n times i sub n. So that'll be from this term. I'm distributing these through as well. And then minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 times i sub n. So that'll be for the next term. And then that'll be a plus, and I'm going to write this in a careful way, 1 half and then n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 times i sub n minus 1. So I wanted to keep those indices the same. Okay, so that's from, like I said, dividing by 2 to the n. And now that's going to be equal to 3 minus 1 over n. And now the idea here is to simply evaluate the limit on both sides of the equation, if you will. So perhaps I'll leave it as a bit of a homework exercise, but this portion will approach zero. This one over two to the n minus one times i sub n. Okay, and now let's look at the other parts. So this n over two to the n times i sub n is exactly the subject of this limit. So that term will go to L, but it's multiplied by four. So in the end, that's gonna approach four times L. And then, well, this term right here is exactly the same as the term in question, just with the index shift. But since we're taking n to infinity, that's gonna have the same limit. So that's gonna give us a plus one half L type term here. Okay, cool. And then we've got one last term, but that's the simplest term almost. It's just the limit of three minus one over n as n approaches infinity, which pretty clearly gives us three. So observe that that just builds up this nice equation that we can solve for L. Putting all of this together, we get nine over two times L equals three. And then dividing things over, we see that L is equal to two thirds. And that's our final value, and that's a good place to stop.